Obstructive sleep apnea is a problem where people are having trouble with their breathing when they go to sleep. Uh, now, a lot of reasons that this can happen to folks. Uh, weight is the most prevalent issue that causes this, uh, particularly in this area. Uh, also, alcohol and uh, tobacco smoking can, can lead to problems with this. But even skinny people can get this uh, if their anatomy is such that uh, they have a tendency to block off their airway. So what people will do is as you fall asleep at night, obviously all your muscles relax. You actually have muscles that help keep your throat open at night. And those muscles, when they relax in the throat, have a tendency to make the throat more narrow. And it's a little more difficult to breathe. So most of us maintain our airway just fine. We don't have any problems with this. But when you start encroaching on the airway, uh, either through weight uh, because of fat deposition in the tongue and in the upper part of the throat uh, that has a tendency to squeeze the throat off a little too much. So about 50% of the population snores and that's when your throat narrows off too much where the air just cannot get past it uh, without making noise. So snoring, not that big a deal, but when you graduate on up into not getting enough breath down in your lungs, that's when your oxygen levels start falling. And that's when we start seeing problems associated with that breathing. Um, the poster up here, that kind of shows where this is a problem. And what we're supposed to see is the airflow go through the nose or mouth, go past the tongue and the little uvula, the little hangy down thing in the back of your throat, goes down into your lungs, no problem. Now, people who have sleep apnea, that air is, a t is trying to go in through the back of the throat, gets blocked off by either the uvula or the back of the tongue there. Now, the way weight plays a role in all this, your tongue gets fat deposited in it just like everywhere else in the body. As the tongue enlarges, it starts encroaching on the back of the throat there, so it becomes more difficult to breathe. So as this happens, you don't realize that's what's going on with you at night because you're sleeping and you start blocking the airway off, the oxygen level starts to drop and that causes you to wake up. Now when you wake up, it's just for a few seconds typically and people don't even realize that uh, that, that just happened to them. But in the meantime, uh, what has happened is you've signaled the fight or flight reflex your heart rate jumps up, your blood pressure shoots up, your sugars shoot up, and that can lead to increased risk of high blood pressure, heart arrhythmias, heart failure, uh, and even uh, worsening of diabetes. CPAP therapy is the cornerstone of therapy for obstructive sleep apnea. And like I showed in the poster up there, what we're doing is we're trying to unblock the airway. So what you're doing is pushing pressure down into the back of the throat, that pushes the tongue and the uvula out of the way so that you can breathe. So not, not extra oxygen, it's just pressure. And what that's going to do is open that airway up, you breathe fine at that point, and then you're able to sleep a whole lot better. The normal prevalence of sleep apnea in the general population in men is about 3 to 7 percent, just depending on the region you're looking at. In women, it's more like 2 to 5 percent. So a uh, lot of folks out there with this problem. Now, when you start looking at patients who are considering bariatric surgery, the number goes up to 77% of people have sleep apnea, significant sleep apnea, to the point where they need treatment for it. And there's multiple studies out there now that uh, are showing actual problems with sleep in and of itself uh, with obesity. And we call these short sleepers, and these are folks that are generally getting only about six hours of sleep a night. Not always necessarily associated with sleep apnea. It's some, for some reason, it just has to do with obesity. Now, that in and of itself can start affecting hormone levels. And there's a couple of hormones out there that they've been studying, including uh, one called leptin and another one, insulin, which everybody knows of. Now, the problem with short sleepers is these chemicals that are supposed to help control our metabolism and our weight, they don't have as much of a response in people who are short sleepers. Uh, there's also another chemical called ghrelin, and that chemical is supposed to help uh, tell us uh, when we need to eat. 
Now, for whatever reason, in short sleepers, you get a, a pretty big surge of that stuff going on when people are sleeping at night, when they're trying to sleep. So you've got leptin and insulin that help control the, the metabolism, and they don't work as well as they should in short sleepers. And you've also got uh, the ghrelin, which uh, stimulates our appetite, which you get a big surge of also in short sleepers. The large portion of patients that are successful with the surgery as far as uh, significant weight loss do get rid of their sleep apnea. Now some do not. It uh, Again, sometimes it has to do with anatomy and some people we just don't know why. Um, but regardless of that, usually when people get this surgery done, their sleep apnea is gone and we can get rid of the CPAP. We're not dooming people to wearing this thing for the rest of their life, so to speak. So. Um, I've encouraged quite a few of my patients to go have that surgery done.